Today we're going to be looking at how we build a foundation for the lower back and we're going to be looking at one exercise in particular, the bird dog, and we're going to understand why it's the most fundamental exercise for low back strength endurance. If you want to build your low back strength endurance, please do click the link in the description and go through to my how to build low back strength and endurance 12 week online program. I've always said the bird dog is the foundation or the most fundamental exercise to any low back strength and endurance uh, program because of the muscles it works and the type of um, stability it brings to the lower back so you're able to build that low back strength and endurance. Now it doesn't mean that it's an exercise that you need to do throughout a whole program. Um, but it is certainly the most fundamental one and any beginner coming to a program should be doing it. And what we're going to do in part one is talk about the teaching points to the bird dog. So if you haven't seen a bird dog before, we are down on all fours. So we come down into this position. So we come into this box position. So we've got uh, wrists below the shoulders, knees below the hips. The other key thing is getting the position of the back. So what we don't want is a rounded lower back or an arched lower back. We want to be somewhere in between, so we just come into this position here. So this is the position that we find ourselves in at the start. We then have a mild brace of the abdominals. We don't need to brace really tight and hold our stomach muscles really tight for the very simple reason it's not that type of exercise. What we're looking to build is again, it's that fundamental strength, endurance and stability to the lower back and in, um, in a later part we're going to talk about the muscles and why the bird dog is so important. So we start in this position here and then very simply all we then do is we lift the arm and the leg from the floor. Now you can create a fist, you can also externally rotate at the shoulder and what that will do, that will access some more muscles of the back of the latissimus dorsi but I'll explain more about that in a second. So what we're doing is we're not, with the leg, we're not lifting it into that position and the same with the arm, we're not lifting into that position. What we are doing is coming from here and we're pushing our leg back. All that does, that helps maintain this position of the back. When we push like so, we maintain the position of the back. Again when we have the arm here, we're maintaining the position of the shoulder. So what we're not doing is again, we're not lifting, we are sweeping it off the floor and holding that position. Again, we maintain a mild brace of the abdominals and what we're also doing is trying to maintain level shoulders and hips. So what I'm not doing is I'm not overarching, I'm just coming into this position and then as I hold the position, I'm maintaining the position of the shoulders and the hips. When we lift the leg, we want to lift, uh, we want to access the glute, so we lift this leg to access the glute, we lift the arm to extend the lever for longissimus and iliocostal. Rotate at the shoulder for latissimus dorsi and we brace the abdominals. So in a very sort of brief overview, that is how we would go about performing the bird dog. What we're going to talk about next are the muscles that are involved some of them, but I'm going to explain a little bit more about why we're using them and how they're building that low back strength and endurance and the stability to the lower back. And then in the later parts, we're going to talk about how we can make it a little bit easier, but also how we can make it a little bit harder. The muscles that are involved in performing the bird dog, but also they are there to build that stability, strength and endurance to the lower back. Now, none of the, mu the muscles that I'm going to mention are, let's just say, of the lower back. They are of the back of the body, but they don't necessarily sort of start in the lower back, if you will. So we're talking about muscles, and this is something that gets missed when we talk about training the lower back, is we aren't training the muscles of the lower back. We're training the muscles around it. Why are we training the muscles around it? Because it seems a little bit counterintuitive. We're trying to build the lower back, but we're not training any muscles of the lower back. Well, the very simple reason is we have a very big tissue known as the lumbodorsal fascia or thoracolumbar fascia. And what that does is all the muscles join into that and that acts as the, the stabilizing tissue of the lower back. 
and all the muscles around it are joining into it. So the glutes join into it, the latissimus dorsi joins into it, longissimus iliocostalis joins into it. So all these muscles that we're talking about join into the thoracolumbar fascia or the lumbar dorsal fascia. And that's holding and stabilizing the, the, um, uh, the lumbar spine. So we build the stability into the muscles, we build the strength and endurance into those muscles, and it's that that's stabilizing the area. So how do we access those muscles? Well, if we start with the glutes and we'll work our way up the body, so we come into this position, and as I mentioned before, we come into that position. So again, we're pushing the leg away. Now, when I get to here, I want to be able to feel this glute squeeze. That's what I want to be able to feel. Then I know I've got that muscle and it's nice and active. Obviously, then when I come in and I move to the other side, I push that foot away, I want to be able to feel that glute working. So what that's doing, that's accessing the glutes and pulling on the lumbar dorsal fascia and holding and stabilizing uh, that side of it. When we're talking about longissimus and iliocostalis, it's the lifting of the arm that's doing it. So we come into this position. When we lift the arm, we are es essentially extending the lever of our back and that's making uh, longissimus and iliocostalis activate a lot more and then it's then able to, to hold all of that lumbar spine in position because the muscle, if you look at longissimus and iliocostalis, most of the muscle is over the ribs. Most of the tendon is over the lower back. So what's happening is the muscle is anchored onto the ribs and when it activates it's essentially, that's its anchor, is the ribs, and then when it hits the lower back, it's, again, it's just holding it in position. But the lever arm is very small, and it's, and it's um, accessing and stabilizing the lower back. So when we come into there, just the simple fact that we're lifting our arm will bring more activity to longissimus and iliocostalis. The final muscle in all of this is uh, the latissimus dorsi. So we come into this position, I come up, I can create a fist, and I can externally rotate. Now it's very important that we externally rotate at the shoulder and not at the forearm. So here, I can still do that, but I haven't moved my shoulder. So I'm not externally rotating my shoulder. I'm just rotating at, my, at the joint in the wrist or in the forearm. What I need to be able to do is, the key is this elbow, is I want that to come into that position. I can use my thumb as a guide. So you can see, as I'm turning my elbow, I'm turning my whole hand. And that's what we want from this. So we come up into this position, and then we rotate. And then what we should be able to feel is latissimus dorsi that comes down the side here. You should be able to feel that activate. So just to quickly go through all of those parts, as we lift the uh, leg, it's the glutes. As we lift the arm, it's longissimus iliocostalis, and as we externally rotate, it's latissimus dorsi. The only other uh, part to add to that is the abdominal wall, which is rectus abdominis and the obliques, and then that will create that solid unit that the lower back is supported within, and then we just build uh, in strength and endurance into all those muscles, and then we've got stability, strength and endurance through the lower back. A common mistake that many people make with the, uh, the bird dog is something that I've mentioned before. So we come down into all fours into the bird dog. Now what most people do is they will go from this position and then they will go into that position and lift up and arch their lower back. That's putting unnecessary stress through the lower back. It will activate the muscles because you're still doing the um, sort of the movement of it but the stress that goes on it because of the extension into the back will put unnecessary stress on it. So the most common mistake that people make is simply just lifting up into that position. Now, as I've mentioned before, what we need to be able to do is come into this position and in some respects we're sweeping the arm off the floor and we're not coming up any higher than the shoulder height. And it's exactly the same with the foot. If you watch the back of my foot, I basically push it along the floor and then it's just maybe a centimeter to an inch off the floor and then I bring it back in. And that's what we need to bring to the arm as well. So it's just pushing it away, bringing it back. And what you should find is that the spine stays in a much more neutral posture, which is again putting 
load into the spine, but uh, an adequate amount. Any extension will just put unnecessary stresses into the lower back. How do we make the bird dog slightly easier? And maybe how do we make it slightly harder? So when we're talking about making the bird dog easier, in fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this around. We're gonna do two things. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have a slightly wider base. So when I come into a wider base, I've got a greater sort of base of support. So I can then come into the position and just hold that much more stable. So that would be the first thing that I would think about with regards to making the bird dog easier, just make, the, um, make the, the base of support or the stance slightly wider. The second thing is very simple, is we would just go with one limb first. So it would be a leg. Then I would come back in, then I would go with the other side. Then I would come back in, then I'd go with the arm, and then the other arm. So that's two very easy ways to make the bird dog slightly easier if you find that your hips and shoulders are wobbling. If, if they are wobbling more, I would go wide base first. If you're finding that you're fatiguing, then I would go with the single limb first. first. So to build the strength and endurance into it, you would go with the one limb. To build additional, uh, to build, or to begin building the stability, I would go with the wider stance. When it comes to making it a little bit harder, again, if we're talking about stability, the easiest thing to do is to make the base slightly narrower, but do exactly the same. The movement is exactly the same. And then we would do the same on the other side. So again, we've got that narrower base of support, which is gonna make us more unstable. When we're talking about the strength and endurance of the lower back, certainly again, as a very, mu very much a fundamental, on a fundamental level, we can maintain the wider stance, but what we would do is we would extend out and then we would draw a small box. So our hand and leg would go out, down, back across and back up. Out, down, to the middle and up. Out, down, to the middle and back up. So that's just a way, and obviously you would do that maybe three, four, five, six times on one side, three, four, five, six times on the other. That will again build the endurance into it because you'll build from say three, four to five to six. And then um, the stability will be, there will be an element of stability in that as well because of the, the movement will offset the balance. So that's a very simple way of just getting some uh, extra uh, stability, strength and endurance into the lower back. Many thanks for watching this tutorial. If you've liked it, please do hit the like button. If you've learned something new, hit the thanks button. If you've got a comment or a question, please do leave it down below. And if you want to watch more tutorials like this, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get them uh, straight into your inbox.